person. I'm here in New York with my cousin. I told you we'd do it. I was gonna pull him aside. This is the collaboration between Mmm Boxing and Mark Priel from the End New MMA Show. We have a couple different topics that I thought would be good to discuss today, Mark, about uh, related to boxing kind of versus MMA, not which is better, but how they intersect more. So uh, how are you doing, Mark? I'm awesome. We are we are crammed in the back end of my bedroom because we had to find somewhere to go to escape our kids who are currently beating the absolute shit out of each other. Absolutely. And we're ready to record this. Thing. Absolutely. Now I wrote notes and I left them away somewhere. <laughs> so we're gonna try we're gonna try to run on this thing on future. Yeah. So uh, my first question to you is about MMA fans in particular. So this is obviously in MMA. Would you not agree? that the majority of the fan base is casual fans. Fair. Yeah, okay. And then you have some diehards in there. Of course. Um, and so even out of some of the diehards, and I would argue definitely all the casual fans, uh, everything I hear in relation to talking about MMA fights, you know, afterwards and anything, even within the promotion, a lot of people seem to appreciate the stand-up aspect more. And it's not just boxing. You have kickboxing and judo and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But either way, it's more of a stand-up affair that and wars on the feet that people love to see. Why is it that you think that MMA fans, especially the casual fans, um, don't give boxing more of a chance? Being as boxing is that. Yeah, that's true. And I definitely have... A good amount of friends who like as soon as a fight hits the mat they're like oh fuck this like and and check out so yeah fair take about the striking obviously being the preferred you know uh medium in an mma fight but i think it's a multitude of reasons like for for me and and the other diehards like you said like it's easy for me to get into the grappling like as long as guys are going for it like hunting for subs you know trying to find ground and pound being aggressive then it's just as exciting to me as on the feet. It's when guys are stalling and trying to hold guys down and hold them against the fence, and that's when it becomes tedious. But I think as a whole, if I was going to try to think the answer to your question, which is, I guess, sort of applies to me as well, and this might, I might get some comments on the, on this show. I this hope question. so. And we like to go to war on this podcast, yeah, so the, let's get the it. Boxing Controversy fans may, shit only. may not love this. I think part of it, and like I said, I feel this sometimes myself, and I love I love to, to watch good boxing also. Yes. But I think part of it is that, to me, boxing is, it's more like an art. It's more like a sport because you are using only one specific part of a fight. Whereas when I'm watching MMA, I feel like I'm watching a true fight. And obviously I can appreciate the sport. I watch basketball, I watch football, I watch whatever. But I almost put boxing a little closer to those because it's an art form. And, and it's one, you're limited to what you're able to do. You're sharpening it. one tool. Correct. Correct. You're able to focus on that. You can move in ways that you can't in an MMA fight. Because if you enter that way or step that way, you're going to get, you're vulnerable to a kick. You're vulnerable to get taken down, so on and so on. So when I'm, when I'm watching MMA, I feel more like I'm watching a true fight. And sometimes, you know, a great boxing match, you don't think twice about it. But sometimes when I'm watching boxing, I find myself being like, man, like, Am I really watching a fight? Because, like, what would happen if they were allowed to take each other down? Like, maybe this dude would be so much better on the ground. And I, I kind of start going through that in my head where I lose a little bit of the feeling of, like, I'm watching this to see who's the better dude. Whereas in MMA, okay. because it's a complete fight, I get that answer when I'm watching. And I think maybe that plays into it for why casuals sort of feel that same way, too. Because it's a little more... You have to appreciate, I think, the art of boxing a little more and maybe be a little more educated to to get hooked on boxing the way you can get hooked on on mma and you know what maybe similar to how you have to appreciate what's going on in the wrestling and jujitsu and yeah, truly same, understand yeah. it to not be like this guy's lying on the ground yes Fair. Okay. which is why the casuals i think gravitate to strictly i like MMA i like that take now before we move on here mark what is your favorite fight of all time oh jesus christ that's a hard question on the spot. don't change it don't change I, it i love hendo Shogun. Okay. Okay. Which was an absolute insane. That's war. not your favorite, dude. It might be. Really? I'm trying to think what else is what else is up there. I love Poirier and Hooker, which I feel like no one talks about. Poirier and Hooker. Those, now, 
How many takedowns do we see in that fight, Mark? Zero. All right. Yes. Zero. Okay. But there were, right. See, there were Is takedowns it? in the first one. Oh, I said, no. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that you were trying to <laughs> punch for me to say a straight striking fight. I love it. I love okay. It. I and love I didn't it. go for it in the beginning. I, I didn't even know that's what <laughs> you were doing. Oh, I love oh, it. That's what I'm here for. That's All right. Great. Actually, that's a very enlightened answer, though. About about you know because it is like anybody can see a war in boxing, a Gotti Ward, Corrales Castillo, and just be like, oh my god. Right. But not everybody's going to appreciate what Floyd Mayweather is exactly. doing in there and these pieces. Exactly. So, um, second question. This is prevalent right now today. Uh, it is just being tried to being passed through Congress right now uh, about the Ali Act, which if you're not familiar with it, is an act that gives fighters a lot more rights to kind of negotiate for their own contracts. Um, they are not considered any sort of, you know, a uh, free agent really in the UFC. You only have to take while you're under contract fights within the UFC. And we all know that with Dana White, um, Anybody, and he'll say this a lot, can decline a fight. It's not like you get kicked out of the UFC even. He won't even really do that. But uh, we all know, is it not fair that he, shot, he, he, he looks down upon that? If you oh, for argue sure. for more money even to accept the fight, or if you turn down a fight in any sort of way, um, you are going to wait a while longer before you're offered something. And that offer will never be within the rankings that your first offer was in. Right. Yep, and and so, there, there is actually even a, uh, a, ca a caveat in the contracts that says if you decline a certain amount of fights in a row, it counts as a fight passed. I, I love this, Marcy. And I did not. This is why you're here. Buddy. Yeah, so, <laughs> like, really. But like, so and so there you go. And, and the thing about the Ali Act is that it is great for fighters negotiating for themselves um, and having rights where you'd have to prove something other way. You cannot um, negotiate with a fighter in that way where you show disapproval to their decisions about it. It's better for them getting paid. It's better for all this stuff. But here's the thing. We all say we want that because we do at the bottom. If we can have our cake and eat it too, 100%. everybody that watches fights wants these fighters to get taken care of. But the ugly truth, the ugly truth is that we're fans of the sport. And so just like boxing, if people don't remember, it literally was for the longest reigning time, the most popular sport in America and in several other countries, as it still is, right? Uh, and, and, but the thing is, is it had a fall from grace. And why did it have a fall from grace? There's different things to be argued about taking it off of TV, uh, putting it to HBO Boxing, which still did all right for it. But once they split it into four different, five different streaming services, everybody under different promotions that are under different TV networks, it all gets, it, it affects it. I would argue that the number one thing that affects us as boxing fans, not being able to get the fights we want to see, not but literally once, we're lucky if twice a year, Right. The, the number one reason is probably the Muhammad Ali Act um, as far as damaging the fans viewpoint of the sport. And MMA fighters have wanted this and fans have said that they are all about this and, and press for this. This is about to go through right now to see for the second time mm -hmm. to see if uh, it can it can be passed for them. Do you see this severely damaging the sport in a realistic sense? If it goes through. Yeah, I think it's a slippery slope, to be honest. I don't, you know, you know more about it than me. And in talking to you, the more I hear about it, the more I'm like, I don't know if the UFC is the UFC with an Ali Act in place. Because so much of what has made UFC great is that unlike boxing these days, you know you're going to see the top guys fight the top guys. And I know, of course, like you said, like, we all want to see the fighters get paid more. They don't get paid enough. It's... It's inarguable. The yep. top, you know, the Connors do. Like, sure, he does yeah. great. But most fighters, and I'm not talking bums. I'm talking, like, the dude ranked number eight. In champions the, in the until they like, get champions a lot of times. Yeah. If they win the belt. But Either you're a belt that. or you're a huge pay-per-view draw. Yep. And other than that, it's you could be fucking a, a killer and you're not getting paid enough. So, yeah. I think every fan wants, wants the fighters to get paid more. If the only way to do that is the Ali Act, I'm not sure fans actually want that. I think they don't, they maybe don't realize enough what comes along with that. They're just focusing on the, on the fighter pay, but I'm not sure that UFC matchmaking is what it is with, if the Ali Act is in place. And you can already see it, like take a division and maybe, you know, casuals probably don't, don't realize it. But if you, if you follow MMA closely, take a division like the lightweight division right now, 
it's a division where you have these guys at the top who've been at the top for a minute, like Poirier and Chandler and Gaethje and these guys who are a little bit, not the old guard, but they've been there for a minute. And you have all these killers coming up in that division. Armin Sarukian, Demir yeah, uh, Ismagula, Ismagula, Rafael Fazeev. The list goes on. And the top guys won't fight these other guys because they're like, oh, they haven't proven enough yet. So even you see it sometimes in May, and as soon as... All right, so listen. Yeah, we got we got cut off. Now, this time you'll notice he's coming to sit down. Yeah. Right, so go ahead and finish your point. We had to switch phones. Amazing. So I, I had just made the point about the lightweight division, how some of these established guys won't fight the younger guys. So just to, to close that point, I was just saying how already you see that sometimes in MMA. And as soon as you see it, fans are like, oh, fuck this. Like, we, this is not what we want. So my fear is that you bring the Ali Act in and we see that more and more. And fans realize this is not actually what they wanted in the first place. And you know what? That's really seriously such a good point. Like how you were saying before about these younger guys not fight, you know, the older guys not wanting to fight the younger guys. That is literally exactly what I'm talking about, but it's on a smaller scale, is it not? So it's yep. just not so obvious unless you look into it like that. And that's what you're here for, Mark. Okay, <laughs> listen, let's move on to the final question here. Um, and this one is a good one. Now, listen, I might one day even do like a breakdown because this has been something that I didn't just, oh, I thought of it. I've really like focused on this a lot as a fascinating topic for me as a fan of both sports. Of course, we're here in a, you know, a boxing, I run a boxing podcast, but I love MMA. And the thing is, is if you talk about with, with both sports, there really is a parallel that runs between them. And what that is, is that right now, boxing has died down, like we talked about before, whether that's the, uh, the Ali Act, the combination of that and the different streaming services and whatnot, and fighters not want, asking for too much money to get their fights. All these things contribute to boxing being cut down. The reason that MMA is so popular right now is because we get to see all those fights we want. The worst thing that's going to happen is within the same year you expect to see the fight, we might see one extra one. It's basically like a bonus. And we do get to see the fight after. We get to see these fights. So my thing is, on a lot of different levels, these histories run parallel. So if you take where the UFC started and where it's gone till now, and you place that more towards the beginning of, of boxing's progress in the sport, or or this de de progress. What's the word for that? We don't know. <laughs> decline. Okay, okay decline in the yeah. sport. Right? If you run them parallel, a lot of things are similar. So for you guys that don't know, um, Bob Arum, who is just old as shit <laughs> and high on gummies all the time, you know, great, great sayings coming up. Fuck that guy. You know, great sayings coming Anyways, he runs ESPN Top Rank. Before they were on ESPN, it was always Top Rank Boxing. Top Rank Boxing had most of these boxers, these great high-level boxers under them. There were very few other promoters. out. Floyd Mayweather's move from Top Rank and Bob Arum over to Al Heyman and, and then to Al Heyman and Showtime, PBC. That is what birthed Al Heyman and PBC being a big uh, boxing promotion because they, they were not before and so you basically have the same thing going on you already see all these different promotions in mma but people don't focus on that yet because ufc is still so you know prevalent they are so on top and and so much more established with the better fighters than these other organizations yep. that being said if you look back a few years ago Nobody in the, in the world, maybe besides you, Mark, because you're a <laughs> diehard, gave a shit about Bellator or yeah. P, PFL's non these These things didn't matter. And now, a lot of average fans, even if they don't watch everyone, they're aware of them. Yep. And even if they don't know other fighters, they know the best ones in them. And you, they can already dream of mixing matchups. Now, as these promotions grow, there will be more and more fighters under them um, not just old remnants of UFC fighters that are washed yeah. up. There will be more new fighters, which Bellator, for one, focuses on for sure. very much. Yep. Um, there will be more and more of them. And then you will get to a point where all of a sudden, I feel like people will go, oh, shit, this is like boxing. Look at the different promoters that won't work with each other. Yep. And, and, and my question to you is just, do you see that playing out in that same way? And... Also, if I may, maybe a, a give or take, how many years, if you do kind of agree with this, because I definitely do, do we see people caring so much 
about the high-level Bellator fighters, and even in one who is shot up out of nowhere. Yep. PFL still get one came out of nowhere. They're really doing well. Yep. I mean, how long do we have before we are itching to see the best fighters in their organization? That's boxing, you guys. They're, it's all boxing, just like this is all MMA. And they just have different promoters that won't work with each other. I see it going the same way. Yeah, I I see it as well. Fully get your point. I think it's it's tough because the UFC is such, not a monopoly, but like as close to it as you can get. They are just a giant. They have so much power, so much money. So much, you know, it's we're still at a point where if I'm talking to a casual person and somehow it comes up that I do a podcast... They're like, oh, you talk about UFC. And I'm like, no, I, I do all MMA. And they're like, so UFC. Like, they don't, people yes. still don't, casuals still don't fully see it. That's how big the UFC is. So I don't know, I, you probably know better than me. I don't know enough about boxing history to know if there was ever, like, an organization. It was top ranked. With that had as, was, was it as dominant as the UFC? They have Floyd in, Mayweather. Well? They have Mike Tyson. They have Muhammad Ali. They had every single person. All right, so maybe it was. So I guess... I guess I, the zone I, is newer and didn't exist for back sure then. yeah of course um and then al Heyman and uh, was not with all with showtime and those things they were not uh, right. as big nearly as they are now right. with gervonta and these people they didn't have anybody when when well they had great boxers but they didn't have any names when like i said when floyd mayweather moved over and said i'm done with you bob right, Arrow, i'll bring you it changed the. It, yeah. it brought up this other promotion so it's, that wasn't it's, competing before. It could be the same with UFC. So my point is that it is tough. As much as these other promotions are growing, like we've seen it before. I mean, obviously, you go far back in the day. Pride was king, but Pride ran into its own issues with some, you know, Japanese yakuza bullshit and, yes, and sunk yes, that yes. ship. You UFC, know, Mark, I might get some back tats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You got enough. Right, right. <laughs> so obviously the UFC took that over. But even then, Strike Force came along, and Strike Force had a ton of studs in it, guys that became future UFC champs. So this has happened before, and back then the UFC ended up absorbing Strike Force. So it's what I mean about how it's such a giant. But we're kind of here again now, where these organizations have grown again. People are starting to care about them again. Like you said, one PFL, but specifically Bellator. And the issue that you see with these other organizations is that the depth isn't there. Like, the depth in the UFC, the 20th ranked guy in the UFC, annihilates the 20th ranked guy in Bellator. But the top guys in these organizations are starting to be true top guys. Like, you take AJ McKee out of Bellator and put him against anyone in the UFC, it's a coin toss fight. Like, he's mm -hmm. that good. And they have numerous guys that are that good across their divisions. They have legit top guys. So we are reaching that point. I feel like I have heard more talk in the last year or so about cross-promotion between UFC and Bellator than I have ever heard previously. And I think it's because, well, it's, it's two reasons. You Like you just said, you are starting to have more fighters. Not anyone who's a superstar yet. Like, you know, if Israel Adesanya's contract was up and he's like, I'm going to Bellator, big, like nuclear bomb explosion. We haven't seen that yet, but we've seen good fighters choose to do it. Gegard Mousasi when he did it, and then he was middleweight champion Bellator for a while. Corey Anderson did it. He's at the top of the light heavyweight division right now. And, and plenty more that I could list. So guys have been leaving, and that's been bringing the casual UFC eye over to these other organizations. That's the purpose So that's it. how you start to get that. And then now what you have is some of these guys are talking about the UFC because they were there. Or you have guys like AJ McKee who just know they're nice, so they're going to talk, who are calling for these fights, which we haven't really seen in prior years. Like, you know, Michael Chandler, Eddie Alvarez, they had their great rivalry in Bellator. They never really said, oh, I want to fight someone in the UFC. You didn't really hear it. Now you hear these guys, they win their belt, they're like, not in the cage necessarily, because I think they maybe feel like they shouldn't say it in the cage, but post-fight, they're like, I want to fight the top guy in UFC. It, they're bringing it up. They're putting it in the media. And in today's media, you say it once, it's retweeted 25,000 times. It's what I have a million times I meant to say, excuse me. So it's, it's definitely more of a topic now, and we are seeing it non-UFC. So we're actually approaching... A, a, an event that's coming up on New Year's Eve that people may or may not know about if you're how depending on how hardcore of an MMA fan you might be but this New Year's Pretty Eve hard. we're getting we're getting an <laughs> MMA event which yes. is a Bellator versus Ryzen event they five guys five guys and Scott Coker actually said when he made the deal with Ryzen because you know Bellator's quality is probably a bit higher he was like oh I I kind of thought I was going to want to bring like my middle guys and try to make some fair fights and, bring an AJ and McKee and shit. CEO of Ryzen was like, fuck that. I want you to bring the best guys you got. And they're fighting the best guys I got. So that's where you're getting on New Year's Eve. So if you're looking for something to watch, tune in.
Absolutely. No, absolutely. And that, that's a game changer. And then the last thing I'll say is that's, that's either a really good thing, because it is a good thing in the moment now, or it's a what came first, the chicken and the egg. Once they do start doing these, it also bleeds into more like, oh, I'm a UFC, I've seen, I watched Bellator, now I've seen them with Rise, and now I've seen, yep. and, and makes you more aware of the different platforms for sure. If they don't continue to work with each other, which usually happens. And if you're a guy, happens. you know, say, whoever you want to pick, say it's AJ McKee, who I keep bringing up. He's already been Bellator champ. He, he did lose it in a sketchy decision, possibly. He'll probably be Bellator champ again. He's about to fight the best guy in Rise, and say he wins that. Say something else happens in the future. There's a cross promotion with one. AJ McKee wins that. You've now hit a point where he can easily be on a mic and tell everyone he's the best in the world. And the more you have that... The more you hit a point where someone who's in the UFC, who is the UFC champ, might be like, you know what, Dana? I want to fight that guy. And that's how we start to cross that bridge. That's so it. it's it's possible. I don't know that we're that we're there yet. I think we're we're years down the road. But maybe three years from now, I could see the picture looking different than it looks right now. Absolutely. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time. So um definitely go check out, subscribe, give thumbs up to my man. Good picks. You want to gamble? Good underdog picks, which Daddy doesn't usually touch those guys that much. <laughs> but Mark has some good underdog. Go check yeah. out and new MMA show, a fantastic MMA show, uh, a long and full show that is very thought through and lots of hard work from those guys. And please, you know my spiel. If you have a, if you have a friend, a family member, maybe even a crazy ex girlfriend, anybody who enjoys combat sports, especially boxing, go check out mm Boxing. Give me the thumbs up and subscription. And lastly, before we go, Mark, do you have two hands? Got them. Anything is possible. Go. <laughs> Go. <laughs> I didn't know where that was going. Thank you for having me on. Peace, please.